honored guests, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the first verse of the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The President of the University. Good morning. <laughs> Mr. Rector, members of the Board of Visitors, students, colleagues, family, friends, welcome to final exercises. What a glorious day. My name is Jim Ryan. And, and, So, in addition to being president of UVA, <laughs> I am your host for today's ceremony and I will also officially award the degrees. Today marks the end of the 194th academic session and we are here to celebrate and confer degrees on students from the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Tomorrow we will do the same. Tomorrow we'll do the same for students from the other 11 schools. Before we begin, and that's how you like to refer to them, I know. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the graduating members of the men's lacrosse team, the baseball team, the women's golf team, and the women's tennis team who cannot be here today because they are competing on the road. We wish them the best of luck. I'd also like to offer some thanks. First, our music today is provided by the U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command Band from Fort Eustis, Virginia, under the direction of Major Day Kim. Please join me in a round of applause for them, as well as for the members of the Army ROTC program. I'd also like to offer a huge thanks to our talented staff who work incredibly hard all year and then put in tremendous efforts to make our grounds look especially beautiful for this weekend and to make this ceremony special for all of you. Particular thanks 
are due to Cecil Banks, our director of major events, and his team, and they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Thanks as well to our outstanding faculty who have served not simply as teachers and colleagues, but also as mentors and friends. Please join me in giving them a big round of applause as well. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate and thanks to thank all the parents and grandparents, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, family and friends in the audience today. Together, together you have supported our students, your students, in countless ways. You've helped pay tuition, you've offered encouragement, and you have fed them when they are home on break. This has been a momentous but by no means easy journey for everyone, including all of you. Today is your day too, which is why I would like to ask all of our graduating students to stand, turn towards the audience, and give a round of applause to those who helped you on this journey. Any reflection on this past year must include acknowledgement and remembrance of the tra tragic and heartbreaking events that took place on November 13th. The deaths of three students, Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry, were devastating. The depth of the loss of these talented and beloved teammates, classmates, and friends is incalculable. At the same time, the way that this community came together to remember and celebrate the lives of those who were killed and to support each other made it plain that the students we lost will never be forgotten. It also made clear that this community is like no other in terms of its compassion for and connection with each other. All of you have my deepest gratitude and admiration. I'd like to give a special welcome to members of Deshaun Perry's family who are here with us today. I know that all of you join me in offering them our love and support. We also offer our love and support to Mike Hollins and Marley Morgan, who were seriously injured on that bus that night in November. Both have been courageous in their recoveries. Marley is a rising third year, but Mike is receiving his Bachelor of Arts degree today, and he and his family are here. Please join me in congratulating them. Finally, I'd like to offer my sincere congratulations and gratitude to the talented and passionate class of 2023. You have had experiences, you're welcome. You've had experiences like few others. Your time here due to COVID and the tragedy last November could not have been what you were expecting. But you rose to those challenges with grace and courage. You were saliva test pioneers. You suffered through seemingly random size limits on gatherings, from five, then it's 10, up to 12, back to eight, and then finally at 7.5. <laughs> you masked when it mattered and even when it didn't because you cared about this community above all else. And when tragedy struck last November, you organized and attended a silent vigil that brought this community together in profound and powerful ways. I hope and trust that you'll look back on your time here as among the most important, engaging, and life-changing experiences of your lives. I also hope and trust that you will remember the moments of joy as well as the challenges, and that you will take from both that there is much joy to be found in this life, and that you can do hard things because you have already done hard things. You are leaving this community stronger than you found it, and I have no doubt you will make the world beyond UVA a better place. And I have to say, I promise that because of all that you've done, 
And given your resilience, your concern and care for others, your accomplishments in and outside of the classroom, and your commitment to this community, for all that you have done to get to this day, the class of 2023 will always have a piece of my heart. With that, let us begin this ancient and honorable ritual through which we will recognize and welcome you into the company of superbly educated citizen leaders. On with the show. The rector of the university. Good morning. As President Ryan said, what a <clears throat> glorious day to celebrate your graduation. It's your day. Breathe in the air. Hug your loved ones. Hug one of the columns on the lawn. Embrace this day, for it is yours now. Not just the degree, but the whole ball of wax. Whatever anyone says or thinks or even curses about UVA, it will now apply to you, too. <laughs> You're a graduate forever. A tattoo wouldn't last as long. It's now fixed on your resume. As of today, you will begin to understand why alums are so invested in this university. In my lifetime, UVA's relative position in the universe has been an ascending curve, always getting better. It's now often labeled as great. That would be by me, of course. Anyone who asks, this is one great school. Yet, as President Ryan has mentioned, there are and have been heartaches and tragedies. For two years now, I've been intimately acquainted with all the details. Devin Chandler, Deshaun Perry, Lavelle Davis, Jr. We continue to mourn their loss with their families, <clears throat> their friends, and our whole community. We will not forget, ever. A pandemic, little did any of us know that when you arrived in August 2019, your student life would be uprooted by the pandemic. But we endured, you endured. Better, you prevailed. As rector of the university and as a double Wahoo myself, and on behalf and on behalf of the Board of Visitors, congratulations. You now have the wind at your backs. Make the most of it. Be grateful. Be wonderful. Be true. You're now free to roam the world and think for yourself. Personally, I hope you'll find a path of service in some form in your lives. There are things to do that will fill your hearts, things that will make a positive difference for you and for others. Do those things. In closing, I love the words of a former, rec a former editor of the student yearbook, Corks and Curls, a quote actually made 100 years ago, 1923. His words remain true to this day. He finished an eloquent piece in that yearbook by writing, I have worn the honors of honor. I have graduated from the University of Virginia. So again, congratulations and best wishes. Now, my main assignment is to introduce our keynote speaker today, our very own, very popular Vice President and Director of Intercollegiate Athletics, Carla Williams. 
Ms. Williams has been at UVA since 2017. And when she, when she was appointed, she was the first female African-American American director of athletics at a Power Five conference institution. <laughs> Ms. Williams hails from LaGrange, Georgia. She took a bachelor and master's degrees from the University of Georgia and a PhD from Florida State University. She was a, a starter on the women's basketball team at Georgia from 1985 to 87. She went on to serve as athletics administrator at her alma mater and was named deputy director of athletics there in 2015. We were so fortunate to attract Ms. Williams to Virginia six years ago. Her commitment to academic excellence, supporting the college athlete to get the most out of their time at UVA, both in the athletic arena and academically, has truly been extraordinary. And she has set an example for all our coaches and athletes. During her tenure, UVA has won, as you know, multiple national championships. And And that includes 16 ACC championships and a, and a record number for placement on the ACC Academic Honor Roll. In addition, during her tenure, the UVA has achieved the highest grade point average totals in our program history and has been recognized by the NCAA for outstanding achievement on academic progress reports. Since 2020, seven UVA athletes, student athletes, have been named the ACC Scholar Athlete of the Year for their respective sports. Ms. Williams has received many accolades. Women Leaders in College Sports 2019 Administrator of the Year for all NCAA Division I FBS athletic programs. A finalist for the 2021 Sports Business Journal Division I Athletics Director of the Year. And this year, the Women in Sports and Events Organization recognized her as one of four recipients of its Woman of the Year Awards based on accomplishments and significant contributions to the business of sports. Ms. Williams has also been active in the NCAA Name, Image, Likeness, Legislation Solutions Group to examine student athlete name, image, and likeness rights, and is a member of the NCAA Federal and State Legislation Working Group. It's a great honor for me to introduce and turn the podium over to Carla Williams. Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you, Rector Clement. To the Board of Visitors, President Ryan, university officials and staff, distinguished deans and faculty, family and friends, I'm honored to be here with you today. To the amazing graduates of the class of 2023, congratulations. When I first told my husband, Brian, that I would be the keynote speaker for today, he started laughing <laughs> hysterically. I didn't know what to make of it, so I started laughing too. And finally, I said, wait a minute, <laughs> why, are, why is this funny? <laughs> and he just looked at me and said, God is hilarious, <laughs> and just walked away. God is indeed amazing. As you know, it has been an incredibly emotional year. And when I was invited to speak, I had decided to politely decline because I just did not know if I had enough left in the tank to give you guys my best. But as fate would have it, I received a text 
from Deshaun Perry's mom, Miss Happy Perry, asking me if I thought the university would consider allowing her to stand in Deshaun's place today. I checked with the appropriate officials and found out that she could. When I called her back to tell her, I said, it's permissible, but are you sure you can do it? She paused and said, yes. He would be very proud of me and I will power through to do it for him. It was in that moment that I knew I would be speaking today. This opportunity is more special than you will ever know. As President Ryan mentioned, we are so thankful that the Perry family is here and that Mike Hollins and his family is here. We love you guys forever. To all families of a student who passed away this year, we as a university community hold you close in our hearts and we continue to keep you in our prayers for strength and for healing. As you might have guessed, I plan on using a few sports analogies today. I have always felt that sport was a powerful force, the way it moves people, the way it challenges societal norms, the way it compels us to believe we can be victorious, seemingly in the face of defeat, the way it brings diverse populations together to become one team, one family, the way it causes complete strangers to high five and hug in celebration, the way it ignores and even rejects society's petty disputes about differences. If we are cheering for the same team, we are on the same team, we are family. If we are on the same team and we are cheering for the same team, we are family. Sport allows us to be family. In 2000, Nelson Mandela said, quote, sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. It speaks to youth in a language they understand, end quote. Most of what we do and learn through sports is easily transferable as a life skill. And I've learned enough through sports to feel volumes. But today, I want to share two lessons with you that I've learned through sport. But first, I want to tell you about a story I heard many years ago about a gentleman in Georgia whose mother and father had been slaves. The gentleman was born in 1888, and he was a laborer and a farmer who worked land owned by others. He was a man of faith. He was humble. He persevered. He was resilient. He had a great work ethic. He was internally motivated. He lived his life with great integrity. And despite his circumstances, he displayed tremendous, a tremendous amount of empathy for those around him. He got married in 1910, and he and his wife had their first child in 1912. Faith, humility, perseverance, resilience, work ethic, internally motivated, integrity, and empathy. All qualities we want in a neighbor, a friend, and a citizen. I'll come back to that story. Lesson number one, don't, let some, don't wait on someone else to validate who you are or what you can become. In life, there will be those who will doubt your abilities create roadblocks for your dreams, maybe even demean who you are. There will be some that will attempt to relegate you to a place less than where you are destined to be. High school athletes who are college prospects are ranked by stars one through five, with five being the best of the best. In the NFL, the pinnacle of professional football, 
there are more players who were once three stars than any other ranking. More three stars in the NFL than four and five stars combined. Why is that? It's because the three stars have a different type of hunger and they do not allow the external to extinguish the internal. They use doubt as fuel. For me and for each of you, the fire within us must burn greater than the fire around us. When I was eight years old, and I remember this vividly, I was playing pickup basketball with a bunch of boys who were mostly older than me. And a few games, and after a few games, one of the boys loudly proclaimed, that little girl can play. <laughs> I remember thinking, I know. <laughs> you must believe in yourself first. You must believe in yourself first. If you want to follow a path that has been painstakingly paid by the sacrifices of others, follow it. If you want to blaze a new trail, blaze it. If you want to make a difference, make it. You get to decide. And when you decide, you will have opposition. Those who will attempt to fight you every step of the way. That's why you have two hands. One for the left uppercut and one for the right cross. Figuratively speaking, of course. But when you bet on yourself, be prepared to fight for it. One of my favorite Emerson quotes, what lies behind you and what lies in front of you pales in comparison to what lies inside of you. In context of 1 John, greater is the one in you than the one in the world. Even if circumstances bump you off your stride, even if you run into roadblocks, even if you fail from time to time, and you will fail because failure is a part of growth if you choose to grow from it, you already have within you what it takes to clear those hurdles. And please know that with every battle you win, you are preparing a path. With every hurdle you clear, you are making a way. In team sports, we know an individual can only excel when their teammates excel. True champions in sport and in life lift others up. We don't tear them down, not even our most bitter rivals. The athletes in the arena understand this. That's because there is a mutual respect for the natural instinct to pursue excellence. All of us have the right to pursue excellence. In 2022, on their way to their second straight NCAA national championship, the UVA women's swimming and diving team, <laughs> broke NCAA and American records in four different relays. In tw yes, there's more. <laughs> In 2023, on their way to their third straight national championship, they broke their own NCAA and American records in the same four relays from the year before. It didn't happen because one swimmer swam her personal best. It happened because each of the four women in each of those four relays swam faster than she had swam in her entire life. Every single one of them swam a personal best when it mattered the most. They did not chase success. They chased excellence, and they caught it. They believed in themselves, and they believed in each other. They did not wait for permission. They did not wait for validation whether it's in sports or not, whether it's as an individual or as a collective. What matters most is your motor, what's inside of you, the fire within. So that's number one. Don't wait on someone else to validate who you are. 
and what you can become, you decide. Number two, display empathy. I purposefully chose the word display because it's not enough to simply have empathy. I don't have the words to explain the pain of this past November or the last six months, but I do know this to be an absolute truth. Every kind word, every kind gesture matters. You never know what someone is going through, but please know that an act of kindness, kindness can be the difference for someone. Empathy, a person's ability to understand and share the experiences of others. And maybe that's why it takes courage to display empathy. Maya Angelou once said, I think we all have empathy. We may not have enough courage to display it. We don't want to understand someone else's experiences and we don't want to always share in someone else's experiences because we know some experiences come with great pain and great sacrifice. In other words, it takes courage to show that you care about the suffering of others. My faith requires it of me and it's part of my DNA. I could not change it if I wanted to. The best sports analogy I have for empathy is really not a sports example. It's an example of humanity. On the night of November 14th, 2022, in this very space we occupy this morning, thousands of students, faculty, staff, and community members came together in a show of empathy I have never seen before in person and will probably never see again. Nothing else mattered. Not race, not religion, not socioeconomic status, not political party, not policy differences. Without one spoken word, the people of this community said in unison, in their movement and their spirit, we care about each other. Please do not forget what we've been through together and may it compel you to show you care about the suffering and the experiences of others. You are the ones responsible, responsible for that vigil. You, students, you are bright and shining examples of the best we have to offer. We need your courageous spirit. We need your innovation. We need your creativity. We need your stubbornness. We need your toughness, your brilliance, your grit, and we need your compassion. We need each of you and we need all of you display empathy. So two things, don't wait on someone else to validate who you are and what you can become and display empathy. I'd like to close by revisiting the story of the gentleman from Georgia. As you can imagine, he had a challenging life, but he was a fighter. He never compromised his faith, his integrity, his work ethic, his humility, his resilience, his empathy for others. A life that saw him and his wife, and you're gonna think I'm misspeaking right now, but I'm not. He and his wife brought 19 children into this world, instilling in those children those same values. The last of those 19 children was a baby boy born in 1934 who to no one's surprise displayed those same values as his father. After serving his country, that son worked and retired as a custodian. And he and his wife instilled those same values in their two children. One of those two children stands before you today as your speaker. I never knew my grandfather because he passed away before I was born, but I'm inspired by everything he stood for and everything he was able to accomplish. I, thought, I often think about my grandfather and my dad and the heartbreak of untapped potential. We are inspired by some people because of what they do. We are inspired by others because of who they are. 
The people who inspire me have both. I'm inspired by individuals because of who they are and what they do. The people who inspire me are from all walks of life. Poor, rich, brown, black, white, Christian, non-Christian, Democrats, Republicans, independents, college graduates, non-college graduates, centered, marginalized, and so on. The people who inspire me are as diverse as the people I hope to serve, as diverse as the people I hope to lead, as diverse as the people I hope I inspire, serve, lead, inspire, serve, lead, inspire. Championship level service serves all. Championship level leadership leads everyone. Championship level inspiration inspires without exclusion. Each of you have your own story, your own journey. Do not leave anything untapped. And I challenge you to be a positive force for good for everyone. I love you. Go Hoos. The president of the university. Thank you, Carla, for those inspiring remarks. All of today's graduating students have chosen to study the arts and sciences, whether in the college or in the graduate school. In doing so, they have reaffirmed their commitment to pursuing the truth wherever it might lead, and they leave here prepared to be citizen leaders in a world that needs them. Some of today's graduating students have earned further distinction by completing their degrees early. 143 students from the College of Arts and Sciences earned their baccalaureate degrees in three years, and seven more college students did so in only two years. I know. <laughs> in recognition of their effort and as a symbol of their achievement, these students are wearing orange stoles today. Will those who are graduating early please stand so we can give you a well-deserved round of applause. I'd also like to recognize the 623 students who were the first in their families to graduate over the course of this weekend. All of today's degree candidates are listed in the digital program, including those who completed the requirements for their degrees in December or last August. For the candidates from the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, we will award 3,164 total degrees, including 2,753 bachelor's degrees, 250 master's degrees, and 161 doctoral degrees. The Dean of the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences will now present the candidates for degrees under authority vested in the general faculty and delegated to me, I will then award the degrees. Just so you know, immediately after these exercises, department graduation ceremonies will take place across the grounds. I think we're ready to roll. Executive Vice President and Provost of the University. I have a lengthy speech. The Dean of the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Well done. The candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy will please rise and remain standing.
Mr. President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. And I welcome you to the ancient and universal company of scholars. Congratulations. The doctors of philosophy will please be seated. The candidates for the degree of Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, or Master of Science will please rise and remain standing. Mr. President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, or Master of Science. I confer upon you the appropriate master's degree with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I charge you to apply the knowledge you have gained in ways that advance the social good and promote humane values. Congratulations. The Masters of Fine Arts, Masters of Arts, and Masters of Science will please be seated. The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science in the College of Arts and Sciences will please rise and remain standing. Mr. President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science in the College of Arts and Sciences. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I charge you. There's more. <laughs> I charge you to pursue truth in all of your endeavors and to apply the principles of rigorous inquiry and civil discourse in your professions, in your lives as public citizens, and in your engagement with the communities in which you live. Congratulations to all of you. The Bachelors of Arts and Bachelors of Science will please be seated. The President and CEO of the University of Virginia Alumni. Well, congratulations, graduates. That has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? On behalf of the UVA Alumni Association, I am thrilled and honored to officially welcome you to our alumni family. You are now part of a vibrant, dynamic, and growing community of more than 270,000 living alumni across the globe. I know that all of them are cheering you on today. Our alumni base is one of the most treasured assets of this great university. It is teeming with talent, creativity, resolve, ingenuity, and generosity. It is defined by a strong set of values seated here at UVA that are actively shaping the world around us. And it is a powerful force for good and great change that will define our future. It is an extraordinary group, and now you are part of it. The origin of the word alumni is Latin, and it's derived from a word that means to nourish. 
And that's essentially what we do through programs and services. We nourish your connections to each other. We nourish your career, and we nourish your engagement back to this university throughout the decades to come. I can tell you from my own experience that your connections to UVA will only strengthen over time. As life takes its inevitable twists and turns, I hope you remember that the Alumni Association is here to welcome and support you wherever your path leads you. So, may this next chapter bring you the success you have worked so hard for. May you go out and explore new corners of the globe, and may you always, always find a way back home, back here to UVA. On behalf of our Board of Managers, our team at the Alumni Association, and of course, the UVA alumni family. Congratulations again, and wahoo wah. The president of the university. That's me again. So, Thank you, Lily. Thank you. Um, we are incredibly fortunate to have such a strong and tight-knit community of alumni whose time on grounds profoundly shaped their lives. And I'm grateful that so many of those alumni have done so much to give others the same experience. Those of you who graduate today have benefited from the generosity of alumni, parents, and friends in ways large and small. And I'd like to thank all of you who have joined this tradition through your class gift. I'd like to say a final thank you to our Grand Marshal and to all of today's speakers and performers. And I hope you'll give them a round of applause. I recognize at this point, I am the only person keeping you from your school ceremonies and celebrating with your family and friends, which is why I would like to discuss in some detail 10 global challenges <laughs> and how your time here has prepared you to meet them. I am kidding, although I do trust that your time here has prepared you for these challenges. What I'd like to do instead is to leave you with one simple request, which is to carry this place and this community with you. When I say that, I'm not just talking about remembering a specific class you took or an event that happened, although I hope you do. Instead, I'd like you to remember the feeling of being here in this place with these people and carry it with you. Carry with you what it felt to be like, what it felt like to be surrounded by a diverse group of fellow students who were as compassionate as they were talented. Carry with you what it felt like to learn from professors who loved a subject so much you couldn't help but get excited about it, too. Carry with you what it felt like to live with your friends with whom you could share everything and anything. Carry with you what it felt like to build bridges, reaching out to get to know someone different and how it ended up changing you. Carry with you how it felt to serve others and the satisfaction that came from devoting your time and energy to something bigger than yourself. Carry with you how it felt to be part of a community that faced down a pandemic. Carry with you the numbers 1, 15, and 41 and what they mean to you. Carry with you what it felt like to live in a community of trust and continue to live your life with integrity and honor. Carry with you bodos, the lighting of the lawn, the streaking of the lawn. <laughs> Snowball fights on the lawn, trick-or-treating on the lawn, Rotumkin, games at JPJ and Scott Stadium, humpback rocks, the donning of the Kente Mad Bowl, the downtown mall, and the corner. Carry them with you. Carry with you the A in UVA because it really was a joke. <laughs> I promise. And carry with you the memory of this day, of walking the lawn and of being together in this truly magical place. If you remember all of this, I have no doubt that you will carry the very best of this place with you as you face, with courage and purpose, the beautiful, joyous, challenging, sometimes tragic, and ever magical road ahead. And when that road leads you back to Charlottesville and UVA, know this, we will leave the lights on for you. Congratulations, class of 2023, and best of luck.
Your department graduation ceremony scheduled for this afternoon will take place at their fair weather locations. The times and locations of the department ceremonies can be found in your program. Those ceremonies will begin after graduates and their guests have ample time to reach the ceremony sites. But first, graduates, please stand for the singing of the good old song.